For the World Center of Racing and the Simulation Stock Car Association, it is time for an encore. After an exciting season three debut for the Cup Series, today the B cars are the stars as the Ad Pro 360 Challenge Series take the stage at Daytona International Speedway in the Top Shelf Mobile Detailing 250. The overture is over, so turn off your cell phones as we pull back the curtain for Act 1 of 23. From the Sunshine State, hello and welcome to the Global Sim Racing Channel and the Top Shelf Mobile Detailing 250 Countdown to Green. Way up in the press box to bring you our word's eye view is yours truly, Bill Subzon, joined by Sean Crackers Ambrose. In the director's chair is the hardest working man in sim race broadcasting, Joe Peak, armed with cameras located aim zoomed and focused by GSRC's camera guru, Dougie Beard. As cyberspace flows into your place over these 15 streamy award-worthy minutes, GSRC will bring you all the storylines, all the stats and facts you'll need to appreciate the 250 miles of simulated NASCAR B-Car racing that will immediately follow. GSRC will be here to bring you all the action live as it happens as we count down to green. Now, folks, for us here at GSRC, Daytona now seems like the party guest that just won't leave. Between the road course and the super speedway over these last few months, GSRC has broadcast thousands of miles of racing. So, Sean, today, in just 250 more miles, we finally get to called uh, Uber and uh, called Daytona and Uber, hand out, hand it its coat and hat, and push it off the front porch. Soup. Before I talk about this glorious track, let me remind our viewers that the race today is sponsored by Top Shelf Mobile Dealing, uh, Mobile Dealing, Top Shelf Mobile Detailing, right there in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's the most experienced auto detailing company out there. For over 35 years, Top Shelf Mobile Detailing has been making rides look new again. Folks, call Robert at 919-883-7497 to get you hooked up on detailing your vehicle for you now soup let's talk about the track a bit a lot can be said about daytona international speedway but much not much needs to be said you know since opening in 1959 when they took it off the beach and put it inside this magnificent facility this place has been the home of the daytona 500 the most prestigious race in nascar the other big event is the renowned daytona 24 sports car endurance race the rolex 24 every year of course uh, but they don't call this place the World Center of Racing for nothing because ARCA, AMA Superbikes, USCC, SCCA, and Motocross all visit Daytona at one time or another during the year. Now, today, the racing will be on the famed trioval. We don't have to talk about a uh, road course here. It's two and a half miles of asphalt with corners banked at 31 degrees, and the trioval sitting about 18 degrees. And soup, you know, usually we take a lap around most tracks, but here at Daytona, you know what, we don't need to take a lap around here because, well, let's face it, you've seen it on screen, it's it's what it is, and it's awful fast, and I'll tell you what, these Xfinity cars today are going to get wound up here, and uh, we've got a pretty deep field right now, I think we've got about 23, 24 cars that are going to take a stab at it, 25 I see, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun here today, baby. Yep, Daytona, it's big, it's fast, and like Matthew McConaughey in a Lincoln commercial, I've seen all I need for a while. So let's go ahead now and look at qualifying that's taking place right now. Now this is this is single qualification going on happening live and it's just like NASCAR does it, it's inverse gridded from the practice times. Currently sitting on the pole is Tim Cox. Yeah, and that's a 53-14, Tim, lady. Now, Soup, they only get one lap for qualifying and I gotta tell you, a 314 is a great opening lap, but it takes a while to get the speed wound up in this car. And uh, anywhere south of a 50.4 is really, really a good time. We're looking right now at Michael Damico putting in his qualifying time. Looking to beat that 50.314. And I guess he's on his hot lap right now. That was his warm up lap, so now he's going to put in his hot lap. You can see how big it is around here. Sean, what is qualifying like at Daytona? I know you spent a long time trying to get your car into the top split of the of the majors. Is it just yeah. kind of hold it straight and then... So, it's, it's not as easy. See, everybody, they, they underestimate the qualifying effort that it takes. Okay. 
you have got to be so smooth as to not scuff off any speed, even getting through the turns. You start hearing those tires screech, you're scuffing off speed. And uh, there's a bit of a trick involved if you can if you can navigate it just right. And it also depends on the rules of the league. But in the majors, the apron was actually allowable uh, down through the trioval uh, on the qualifying lap. So it, once you get out of turn four, I'm not sure, God, Lee, I wish I'd have checked. I'm not sure if they allow it here in the Challenger Series. But uh, if you can use that flat, you may even be able to shave off about three to four thousandths of a second, which could be the difference between the pole and second place. Danigo comes around and he slots into 11th spot. Looking at Jeff Dotson, he's going on his cool down lap right now. I believe they're bringing out the next group of cars. First up, I think it's probably going to be, I'm going to guess, maybe Steve Seegers. Yep, Steve coming out on track right now. What we've seen in, in racing here, Sean, well, it's qualifying probably not as important as like if we were at a short track. Passing at Daytona isn't quite as easy as one might expect. <laughs> so we, well, as you alluded to in the uh, top of the broadcast you know, we've seen so many races here over the past several weeks um it, boy you, you better in the xfinity car if you get enough people up there working with you uh you can make that line move uh i'm one of those people that loves to be down there on the bottom i don't like the top side uh, I think there's safety down on the bottom, but only these drivers, uh, only they will know when they're in the heat of battle where the best place to be is, and, and you'll see them moving and darting all over the place trying to find the next opportunity to get to the front. The only thing about that is it doesn't come he easy here at Daytona, and you've got to be careful with the way you match up with the guy in front of you. Uh, uh, absolutely no, they've already talked about it in the pre-race, absolutely no uh, bump drafting in the turns. Uh, again, like the uh, like the A car, this B car does not match up well uh, front bumper to rear end. So we're going to have to watch out for the bump drafting and uh, whether or not that will cause many problems, if any at all, today. Yeah, a lot of talk in the pre-race practice about bump drafting that can be summed up with four letters and a piece of, uh, of punctuation. That's D-O-N apostrophe T. That's what everyone was saying about it. Just don't do it. Right. As we look at Seeger comes across the line, he's going to get up to eighth. Let's see, we got uh, Gabriel Wood here on track now. The double lot, Snow Motorsports Machine. There's Steve Seeger's back there again. Now, what's a little bit misleading about the practice times here, Sean? These are lone qualifying times, but the practice times are not. So uh, it's possible some of these practice times are a little skewed by who they were following around the track. Sure, sure. Yeah, no. Um, obviously, drafting speeds a lot, uh, uh, a lot different uh, than than the actual solo qualifying speeds that we're seeing here. And Seegers goes up the board. He puts himself in ninth there, Sue. There he goes. I continue to look through all of my material here. Somewhere I have information on all these drivers. I'm trying to find. Give you a little bit of insight. If we can't do it this week, we'll certainly have it next week for you. The next four drivers looking to come out as there's still about seven minutes left in qualifying before we go green. Just about five minutes. Donald Stewart on track now, and that's the number 78. He's out of Georgetown, South Carolina, for running for Stewart Racing, and... Uh, he found the chart. I, Sue, I'm ready, buddy. I'm ready to go <laughs> here. Yeah, he's uh, his sponsors are Stewart and Hovis Construction. He's the co-owner of that... Uh, there in the 78 machine. Steve Durham now on track. Hailing out of Brewster, New York. He's on the Aegis Motorsports team there, Sue. I know you're from New York. Is anywhere from uh, Brewster anywhere where you are? Have you ever heard of Brewster? <laughs> uh, you know what? Actually, I had not. Um, but that is more uh, upstate uh, than, than where I am located higher on, on the east end of Long Island. Looking at Dave Durham out on track. He comes around in the 40 machine. Sean, why don't we take this opportunity here to make sure we get in all of our business. Let's talk about the, the uh, race details here. 
Yeah, let's do that here real quick. Okay, so this is race one here in the regular season for the uh, the Xfinity Series here, the Challenger Series here, the Apo 360. Um, it's going to be a fixed setup soup. They're running the iRacing fixed setup. Now, something a little bit different they do here, like they do in uh, the Cup Series, you have four sets of tires allotted to you. I like that. Bit of strategy there, Sue. Only four sets. That's all you get. And you'll get DQ'd if you cause two incidents, okay? They'll give you a break on the first one. After two, you are out of here. Um, usually, we're used to seeing those eye racing incidents. They don't mess with that here. It'll nope. uh, be incident based. So, there is uh, someone in the booth working race control. Green, white, checkered. Yes, Sue. Evan Elvis. They. <laughs> it, it can be a little bit of a nightmare from the. Uh, timing and scoring standpoint but yes if we are faced with a situation there they will do that now uh uh the green white checkered basically if it finishes uh, if the race is to finish under yellow then the top 10 drivers will have one attempt for a green white checkered going green after the pace car pulls in from the victory lap so that's how they work it if we get there jim cox still on the pole these guys are hustling to get in all of their stuff before the qualifying finishes up they have three just under four minutes to get it done they backed it up a little bit to give us time to talk about. Of course, there will be a prize for sitting on the pole. We'll talk a little bit more about that probably during the pace lap. Looking at the 78 machine right there of Daniel Donald Stewart sitting in 17th. Look Still down here. It's possible they got them all done. I'm looking here. All the people that put in... All the people who put in practice times have a qualifying lap in, with the exception of Robert McFarlane and Charles Smith. Yeah, and Soup, uh, observation I made in practice, uh, you have to deal this evening with McFarlane and McFadden. Okay, we'll yeah. see. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Let's start a consumption game, boys and girls. And of course, we recommend that you do it with some type of non-alcoholic carbonated oh, barley course, beverage. Yeah. I every, saw that. My first thought was, oh, poor soup. <laughs> GSRC cares. Okay, we've got all of our business in here. We have a few more overlays to go through, but we'll save it a little bit, including the exciting that we get to announce the uh, the poll winner here, and there's a prize for that. Oh, soup, you know what? While we're waiting, you know something I didn't mention? Man, we're, we're stage racing. And I, I totally oh, yeah. forgot to bring that up. Yeah, we're stage racing here, and so the stages work. It, just the way to do in the cup, uh, uh, as as it did in the the, the uh, cup race last week, and that is we're going 25, 25, and fifty. So they'll okay. throw the yellow. There it is. There, there we have the race analysis there for you. Stage one will be twenty five laps. They'll throw the yellow, bring everybody in. Stage two, twenty five laps. They'll throw the yellow, bring everybody in, and then that final stage fifty will be unobliterated action all the way to the end. And uh, fuel run, we're expecting about thirty to thirty five laps in this machine. And the pit is closed just like they do in real world racing. It closes two laps before they throw that uh, Irish gingham flag there, the green and white checkered flag that ends the stage. So uh, there's a lot of strategy. If in theory you could come in, maybe make a stop before a few laps before they throw that flag. If you can stay on the lead lap, you can come around and get a shot. Uh, it shuffles up the order a little bit. And that's something we saw last time as uh, there are, of course, bonus points. We'll talk about that. Bonus playoff points for winning a stage. You get one for that. And let's go. We'll go to the pole lap right now. Can we get an image here? This is uh, the round one winner of the Sim Speed Shop Pole Award. And of course, today that is going to go to Tim Cox. For every two poles, the driver earns $5, and the driver with the most poles at the end of the season earns $20, courtesy of simspeedshop.com a great place to order custom button boxes as well as buy and sell used equipment for more information go to simspeedshop.com soup they've got a lot of goodies there i don't know if you've been to their website but they've got a they've got a hefty haul of goodies on, on that website worth a look folks go check it out and with that out of the way as we're looking at, I believe this must be the, are we looking at the pole lap here? Is this, what, this, one, this is the pole lap by Tim Bucks. 
Obviously not quite as exciting here at Daytona as it would be otherwise. <laughs> you can see the long shadows here as the sun is well, setting. Let me tell you about what Tim's doing. Now, most of the time when you have like a three to four lap qualifying, uh, as, as we're completing the lap here, um, is you want to start that car high and then work it down. Well, Tim got right out of the box and kept it down on the lowest part of the track because, well, that's the quickest way around. And if you've only got one lap, you, you want to go for it all right then. How about our director finding that pole lap? Congratulations there to Joe Peak doing some magic in the production van. Well, how about weather, Sean? Put on your put on your uh, high heel shoes and a little short skirt. What's it look like? Yeah, it's a beautiful day. Uh, it's a little partly cloudy. It's warm on track, 102 degrees. It's still plenty of grip here at Daytona. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, it tires might take a little bit of a beating but we'll see uh, the air temp 76 degrees out here it is a great day for racing a little bit of wind out of the southeast is seven miles an hour but here on the high banks of daytona and the speed of these machines generally not a big concern as long as it's somewhere under about 10 miles an hour the commentators continue to ask gsrc for some type of telestrator potential where we can draw some <laughs> clouds and sun rays for you but they they do not trust yes. what we will draw. They're so not going to be using the telestrator. So, <laughs> <laughs> With that going on, our, there's one more shot. The director says, absolutely not. Can we go to the grid, director? Are we able to do that? Let's do that right now. Shall we got plenty of time. Let's take them two at a time here. On the front row, it is Tim Cox. He put in a 50.314. He is flanked by Mark Clewell. All right, row two, going to be Gary Sexton there in third, and Steve Durham going to start fourth. Pick up your glasses, boys and girls. Here's the first one I got to do. Mark McFadden on the inside of row three, flanked by Jeff Martin. Row four, going to be Gerald Campbell and Jason Eisenhower. We'll start eighth today. I like Ike. I think he's going to do well. Ninth spot there is Kyle Kammer and Steve Sager in the tenth position. All right, then we're going to go down to row six. It's going to be William Hartman and the Canadian, Curtis Young. In the Baker's Dozen spot is Blake Griffith, not to be confused with Blake Griffin, now of the Detroit Pistons. Outside of him is Michael D'Amico. All right, row eight, going to be Trey Galgan. And in 16th, Adam Eisenhower. So we've got Jason. Boy, Soup, you're going to have your hands full. Adam Eisenhower starting 16. I can handle that. Donald Stewart and Gabriel Wood fill up the next row. Row 10, Tim Rangers and Jeff Dotson. Michael Snow and Will Davis in 21 and 22. All right, I'm going to take the rest of these guys here, Soup. It's going to be row 12, Josh Tanner, Charles Smith, and Robert McFarland is going to be starting 25th tonight. He did not take a time. We have got all of our business done. All the overlays are done. Now the only thing we have to do is to go racing. Once again, welcome to the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of the Simulation Stock Car Association Ad Pro 360 Challenge Series. It's round one from Daytona, and it is the Top Shelf Mobile Detailing 250. The first round of 23. There are 16 regular season races. After that, They'll take the top 12, go to the playoffs. Of course, if you win a race, you're in. Win and you're in. The rest of the, uh, if they don't have 12 winners, the rest of the field will be filled based on regular seasons points. We'll talk about all that during the breaks that are coming up here on lap 25 and 50. Right now, they got enough fuel, Sean, to go the distance. So it's basically, we're looking here at a 25 lap sprint. And as uh, a song once mentioned, uh once mentioned, uh, we're uh, we're going for distance. We're going for speed here tonight, Sue. <laughs> Gotta love a cake reference. <laughs> Car number 19, Tim Cox out in front. Mark Leewell on the outside. From what we've watched and all of our many miles of covering uh, stock car racing here these last few months, the outside line can work, but doesn't always work. Gotta get a run. Gotta have some help to do it. And then, you've got, and then you've got to be willing to leave your dance partner <laughs> and, and get in front of that, uh, that bottom line. 
A lot of also talk about lagging back. They don't want anybody sandbagging on the start. They also cannot pass on the inside line until they cross the start finish line. Lots of things to watch out for. There are live marshals here. That will not only give you a black flag if you deserve it, but hopefully take one away if iRacing falsely throws one your direction. Are you ready? The pace car pulls in. I'm ready, see. Now it's all in the hands of the leader, Tim Cox. Gather up the chicken steak, cover behind the cows because the horses are out of the barn. And on the Global Sim Racing Channel, it is the number 19 of Tim Cox leading the way on the inside line. Mark Leewell up on the top side trying to make it work. The 65 doing pretty good. Soup, and we had a few cars start from the pits. Uh think at the very very back there i think robert mcfarlane actually started from the pit lane is that bobby mcfarlane of <laughs> i do not of, think of, it is be happy don't worry I could be. <laughs> all right the 65 making a run up on the top that is uh mark clewell doing a good job as they come around four let's see who gets credit with leading the first lap ever here on the global sim racing channel in this challenge series and it's gonna go to our pole center Tim Cox in the 19. They are two by two by two by two by two by two. Yeah, nobody looking to be too brave here yet, Soup. It's very early. The car's still trying to get up to top speed here. They've just about found it now, coming down the back stretch. That top side not moving yet, but now a little push there from the 10. Steve Durham getting it going there. Leaning on Mark Clewell just a bit. We didn't have it on our overlays because we like we don't like to promote the faster pair. And this is big boy racing here in the 360 Ad Pro Series. If you break it, you bought it. That's why these guys have to be a little bit careful. There are no spare cars. As my goodness, the 65. That is Mark Clewell got really close to Gary Sexton, the inside of road of the inside road. They're second in line. The entire field uh, separated by 1.8 seconds. Sexton now comfortably in second place. Look at the run here from the 65. That's Clewell. He's getting a little help from Steve Durham behind him. But like we said before, is it going to be a little bit of a bump draft? Ooh, boys, be careful. Sean, there's nowhere. that This is not like Talladega. Hard to make a three wide here racing, right? I guess it can be Ooh, done. You you can do it. Yeah, you can't do it for long, Soup. It really takes incredible patience and, and a little bit of nerve to be that guy in the middle of three wide here. They come across completing lap number three, working lap number four. It remains the same. Tim Cox and Mark Cleewell up in front. Let's go ahead and talk about the drivers then in the second row. On the inside, that's Gary Sexton in the 13 car. He's got Steve Durham to the outside. They race side by side, door handle to door handle. Let's go back to the next row. How about the 48? That's Mark McFadden. And the 15 giving a little push there to Durham. That is, who is in that 15 car? Is that, that is Jeff Martin. Jeff Martin, yes. Now we have done a lot of races here on the Global Sim Racing Channel, but if memory serves, Jeff Martin was indeed the winner in the inaugural race here in the sister series the cup challenge good to see him back racing again with us doing double duty is there anybody playing back there playing hooky anybody sitting back there and sandbagging how about the car in last still on the lead lap uh, charles smith in the 12 machine just behind michael yeah. snow charles just kind of sitting back there waiting honestly sean as we ride on board i honestly don't think they're far enough back uh it's, get, it's so hard to get these cars loaded up if something happens in front he'll be in it before he knows it that uh that's certainly one of the risks that you run by being back there but uh, there is safety back there you can hang back just long enough to you know have some pretty good vision in front of you you may avoid it Honestly, the guys are in trouble right now. The guys in the mid-pack, because anything can break out there or in front of them. Yeah, that's that's where I don't want to be. I don't want to be in the middle of the hornet's nest when it decides to erupt. 
Let's talk about one of those drivers in the Hornet's nest. nest. How about the 88 machine of Kyle Kammer? He sits, uh, we're going to call it fifth in line on the inside. It's about eighth overall. The car on the outside of him is Jason Eisenhower in the 36. Jason's got that beautiful Sim Speed Shop paint scheme on there. The white, red, and blue colored car. You see him on the outside, fourth in line on the top side. You know, I can't help but to notice, man, some great liveries in this series, Soup. Some really, really cool looking cars. And we like the beautiful paint jobs. And as commentators, we like you to stick with the beautiful paint jobs. So let's just get to know you. Look at the bump from the tent now. That is Durham. He's been up top of the high. He's had enough time there. He says, let's see if we can make this work. And Mark Cleewell is out of front now, Sean. Does mm. Cleewell leave him hanging? I think he's going to. He, he leaves Steve a little bit too quick there. He's, oh, ooh. he did not get uh -oh. down. And now it's a mistake. And now he is stuck in the middle. Uh oh, that, trouble behind, trouble behind. Looks like maybe Blake Griffin. Boy, that was the 26 and the 88 getting together there. The 26 able to come back up on track. There is no caution. They, they, spit, they, they spun off into the Florida Tundra off the racing line. The cars kept going straight. And Steve Seegers is going to come down across the 88 here. Seegers in that 26. His Mustang. Kyle Cameron taking, take, Kyle taking a ride down there, but holding on to it. Boy, what an excellent job there by Kyle. Lost that a lot of time. He's stuck all out there by himself right now, though. That is dodging a Daytona bullet there. I thought that spin was going to be great new for Mark Klebo. When we last saw him, he was stuck in the middle in the Steeler wheel position with clowns to the left and jokers to the right. But somehow, Mark managed to extricate himself from that spot and now is back in his familiar spot to lead the outside line. Well, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, that, that was costly to the field because a lot of guys got caught out behind that trying to check up and soup this field is split up quite a bit yeah now a lead nine car pack that goes back to curtis young the last car in line it's got about seven tenths of a second to michael damical damical stringed up with three drivers in tenth damical adam eisenhower and william hartman all trying to work together see if they can get back up to the front as they work lap number 10 Well, this front pack definitely holding tough right now here. The guy in trouble is currently in 25th position all by himself, Kyle Kammer. We saw him do really well last time out in the Cup Series. He's in jeopardy of going a lap down. Fortunately for him, there will be a competition caution coming in just 15 laps if he can stay ahead of the leaders. Yeah, we'll get that stage caution. That'll help him out, Soup, if he just keep keep the car on track here he will not uh he won't get lapped i don't think he has to worry about that he's just got to stay in the throttle and keep working here get to the get to the first uh, stage caution here and what we've got uh, 14 laps to go for that remember the stages they pay bonus points down to 10th position so all those drivers up front in that nine car train confident they're gonna get a little something not so confident is michael damico and Adam Eisenhower, as those guys race for 10th, they have dropped William Hartman. Remember, Hartman was behind him. Hartman in the 07 is falling. Let's look back at 12th position. Blake Griffith goes around in the 7 car, as does the 49 of Trey Galgan. The 07 William Hartman is struggling, Soup. He picked up damage checking up on that incident earlier and got it on the front and, and on the rear. And it's got that car slow right now. And uh, Galgan, Griffith are checking out on him. And D'Amico and Eisenhower catch the field. Boy, it did not take them long to get there. Here they come. They are back by... Well, Young is in 11. Oh, you're right. Eisenhower are there. You're right, Sean. The 86 and the 94 are there, turning that into now an 11-car field. It's two seconds back to Blake Griffith, and we're not sure if he's going to be able to get there. So now, look at him. Look at him. Race in position. The Pied Piper is the 19th car of Tim Cox. He has been on the front of that, hugging that yellow line for most of the race, except for that little bit of time when uh, 
Cleewell was able to get a nose in front of him for a little bit. Two by two by two by two by two and one in the back. Eleven cars. We're halfway through the first stage as they work lap number 13, going to lap 25. Remember, the window for the pit lane will close on lap 23. Okay, Wait, so... Go ahead. I'm sorry, this this pack, Donald Stewart, Will Davis, everybody, uh, Robert McFarland, this pack coming together, and they've helped out the 07. Now, William Hartman found some friends, and he's back in the draft. Even with the damage, he's able to get into the toe, riding right behind the 41 right now. With the driver of Blake Griffith being almost three seconds behind the leader, it would be a tall order for him to come in, get fuel, tires, and get out, but it's a possibility. Look for some of those guys who tried to get that to come in on lap 23, pit and get out. Look at this run they're getting, man. Blake Griffith and Troy Galgan, they had everything all to themselves, and now this angry horde. Look at the 78 up on the top side, Donald Stewart. Got to crank it up there. He's looking for some help. Here comes the 41 of Robert McFarlane. The 84 there, Josh Tanner. Let's get it moving here, guys. Bobby McFarlane on the top side in the, sixth, in the uh, 41 machine, sitting in sixth place, second in line behind Donald Stewart. Might be the best case, the best thing that might happen for the driver up in front there, Blake Griffith, but maybe let some of those faster cars see if they can get around to the front pack and really mix it up here. They are four seconds back. That front pack, which was once seven, is now nine. Tend to go to our first caution here. For the completion of stage one. Ooh, things get a little squirrely up front. That was the uh, Steve Durham looking a little out of shape there for a moment. He got awful close there to the rear quarter panel there of Gary Sexton. Some cars we have not mentioned in the front pack. Let's go back to ninth position or tenth. It's number six. It's Gary. It's a uh, Gerald Campbell. He has been hugging the inside line, fourth on that inside line the entire time. Sits behind Jeff Martin. And then, of course, uh, Gary Sexton. That's the drivers two, three, and four on the inside line. They go around the lap car. That's that 88 machine. Yeah, Cameron. Cameron was just out there for too long by himself, and he's going to get past now. But I'll tell you what, this second group is starting to maybe reel in that front group maybe just a little bit. they still got a long way to go. Last car in that front group, Michael Damico. He's got about four and a half seconds back to those guys. Kyle Cameron, though, might work as a stepping stone for those faster cars to get up there. They can get behind him, suck up behind him, see if they can make a run. They come across, working lap 17 now. Good racing so far as we get the inaugural race here on the Global Sim Racing Channel of the Ad Pro 360 Challenge. We've gone green so far. Knock on this imitation wood. <laughs> Soup, uh, a magnificent start to this race. And yeah. uh, boy, you see what's going on up front there. You see Mark Clewell now coming up around, getting a bit of a run. Does it by getting the side draft there off the leader. Tim Cox and Gary Sexton gets that car just as close, gets his Camaro just as close as he can the door of his opponent on the inside there try and pick up a little bit of speed doing that 10 points online for the winner of the stage but something even probably more important for drives guys thinking about a championship is is that one playoff point that will go with the playoffs assuming that they make it and right now look at the 65 he's got a great run here comes Cleewell but it starts to die oh he's about a half car length behind Cox we saw him do it once, Sean. He got out there once, but hasn't done it since. Yeah, and Durham's leaning on him a bit. And that's that's going to be helpful. It's going to keep him up there, but sometimes Durham loses that line behind him and maybe not quite as brave to go down to there at the bottom. And, oh, we do have a caution. Stewart. Oh. Dr. Stewart involved in this one as he, as he pinwheels down the track, collects several yeah. drivers. Tim Rangers also was another driver involved in that. I think I think it started with the 41 of Bobby McFarland 
Oh, he gets a little bit loose into Stewart. Stewart is is turned into the wall, and mm. then it's an octopus putting on his socks. And then Rangers, yeah, Rangers gets in on the tail end of that, and also looked like the '88. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, Steve Seegers with more trouble picking up some damage on that. Also, geez, that was a mess, soup. We'll go on board Rangers. Take a look at this one. And then if we can, we probably have time. Maybe one more look from the on from the cockpit of Gabriel Wood and the double zero machine. Here we go with Rangers. And Sean, we talked about, boy, look at that. We talked about drivers sitting back, staying out of trouble. This is what Gabriel Wood did. And we want to stay on this one for a long time because I think he was telling people to stay on the brakes as there were cars sliding across sliding across the track long after he'd almost come to a stop. Let's watch this. He is the last car, last on the scene. Mm. And all breaks loose. He gets it. The good news is there's no one behind him. He doesn't have to worry about getting up. Uh, getting hit by anybody and there you see a break loose in front of him but stay with us as you'll see cars is he safe you think he's safe and then he yells please stay on your brakes because slide right in front of him there you go and he makes his way through well i believe that one fell early enough that we are going to come back and have a sprint to the uh to the end of this stage race that fell on lap 19 these, these yellow flags tend to be a little bit longer here in the Ad Pro Series because we have live admin and there is a little more business to take care of than iRacing does, but I think we should be able to come back. We'll see. Your top seven did not go into the pit soup. They opted to stay out for track position for this first stage. I think that was a pretty wise call, to be honest with you. But look who did come in. Mark Clewell, who was stuck on the top side the entire first 20 laps of this race except for that one moment where we were stuck in the middle he did come in damico was in the back blake griffin eisenhower another eisenhower both eisenhowers come in honestly the only driver that was up in front that had a shot for, for really good points was Cleveland. He came in so our leader right now is tim cox the top nine drivers are all out. They'll have to make that stop under the competition caution that will come in just a few laps. Tim Cox, Gary Sexton. Oh, this is where he's, Sean, this is where we get to the odd and even where you get to, we've yeah. done a lot of short track racing where all of a sudden, Gary Sexton, who was so happy hugging the yellow line, had the yellow line. He just looked over his left shoulder, could look down and see that yellow line. Well, now, because he's in an even position, he goes to the outside line. Yeah, Mark Fadden becomes a, a really good friend all of a sudden yeah. there to Gary. Mark McFadden in fourth. He'll be outside. He'll be in second position on the second row. Outside of the second row, Steve Durham. He'll be inside of row two. Jeff Martin in fifth. Inside of row three, Gabriel Wood. Remember Gabriel Wood just a minute ago? We were on board with Gabriel. He was one of the last cars in the field, managed to make his way all the way through. Well, now he's up in sixth. All right, so let's, let's give you an update here. We do have an EOL given to Michael D'Amico, the number 62. Going to have to go to the end of the line, uh, driving through five pit stall suit. They can only drive through three, and they are watching that. You know what, Sean? This is not the only series that has that rule. Many of the series that have live stewards have that rule. And I will, I will, gosh darn, be confused why we see so many of those penalties. You you do it. Is it is it really that hard to to uh, avoid going through more than three stalls? Is there an advantage to it? Okay, so the first time into your pit box, okay, the very first time, sometimes you miss oh. it sometimes you don't know exactly where it's at and you may pull in a little bit too early oh, i see you may just pull in early so you're so you're safe because you can't actually damage a car when you're driving through the actual pit lane the inside up against the wall there but uh the fact is it's awful confusing for guys when they're trying to get in or out and someone's coming right through you there so they limit it to three stalls but yeah it's it's not hard to get caught out that first time in and I get it, honestly, because iRacing 
you really don't, you're never in your stall after qualifying, and they shuffle your stall around based on how fast you are, I would imagine, right, Sean? So you're not really sure where it is yeah. the first time in. Okay. Well, thanks, buddy. That's why you get paid the big bucks to sit next to me here. If you can, I'd like you to, next, I would like you to explain Bitcoin to me, but we'll save that oh, maybe for, right, a, for, for <laughs> when we're in the bar together. All right, so we've had, we have had a casualty. Unfortunately, Donald Stewart has taken his car behind the wall soup and will not be returning to the action here. Still several cars sitting on pit lane for lengthy stops. Steve Seegers, Tim Rangers, Robert McFarlane all find themselves still sitting on the pit lane. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me as I saw all the carnage that was going on through that spin. Looking at what we have here, it looks like there are 21 cars still on the lead lap. And there were a few late takers for pit stops, maybe, as it looks like the top seven now have yet to come in for a stop. Soup, real quickly before we get restarted, we've got a bunch of fans out here in the YouTube chat tonight. I uh, just want to give a special shout out to Michelle. Hope everything is going well uh, uh, there at the hospital. And uh, uh, our thoughts are, our positive thoughts are with you for your loved one there uh, in the hospital this evening. But thanks for watching. Absolutely. I will ditto those comments. Well, here we go. The pace car peels. So does the thunder of the engines that we are back under green flag again, working lap number 23. The pit lane is now officially closed. They cannot come in even if they were just there. Our leader is Tim Cox on the inside to see Durham stuck on the top side. That is Gary Sexton. He finds a spot down in the third. Now it's the 48 car that's stuck top. That is Bobby McFadden. McFadden, oh, Sexton pulls up. Look at this, the tan also making a move. Sexton says, I'm going to try to scoot through the middle. Is there room? No. The 15 is in there as well. Stage racing. They're starting to lose their minds. So here we go. Three wide. Jeff Martin with a run on the low side. He's got the 13. He's got the 19. He has a nose to the lead. Ooh. Jeff's got to be so careful. He was right down there on an apron almost there. Trying to straddle that yellow line. But the power is on top right now. Here, Super. Galgon is the pusher in the 49 car for Martin. Not giving Martin much help as the top line begins to move. Heard some bumping and banging, but we stay under green. And they left everybody. Tim and Gary left everybody up there in that top line. Left them hanging out to dry, and they're right where they want to be here up front. Gary giving Tim a really good push here down the back stretch. In the 15, Martin or Jeff Martin, he made it work once. This time he's going to try it up top. Getting a little help from the 49 of Galgan. They are working lap 24. They're not going to see that checkered flag yet. They come down completing lap number 24. Mm. Now they're showing the white flag here for the first stage. All right, Trey has just got to be, he's got to be a good partner here to Jeff. He's got to stay right with him, stay in his tracks. He's got to just stay honed in on that line. Try and give him a good bump down the back here. He's not going to get to him. Boy, they're really starting to lose out up there. It stalled out on the back stretch for the top line. Is there time for the top line? The 49 is late to the party here. Trey Galgan trying to give a little help to the 15 of Jeff Martin. They come off a of four, leading the way. It is Tim Cox. Is anybody going to make a move as they come to the checkered flag? It waves, and let's give points to Tim Cox. I believe that should do it. The yellow flag is out. Tim Cox, Gary Sexton, Jeff Martin, Blake Griffith, Trey Galgan, Josh Tanner, Gabe Wood, Mark Clewell, Adam Eisenhower, and picking up one regular season bonus point, Steve Durham in 10th. Give the one playoff point to Tim Cox, the winner of stage one. It was just a solid opening stage for Tim to begin Absolutely. with. I mean, he spent most, if not all, of his time right there in, in the front row or just behind it. So uh, a really, really good solid run there for that Toyota Camry. 
Jeff Martin made his presence known, though, as he got down on the inside, got to the lead for a while. You start to get an idea, though, of the, the car to beat might be that number 19 of Tim Cox. Well, what we'll do right now, this is a good opportunity here at the Global Sim Racing Channel for us to take a short break. The leaders will come in for a pit stop, look for some of the drivers that took pit stops earlier to cycle to the front. We'll run down the, the way it all sorts out when we come back from Blake. Break, don't go far.
Welcome back to the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of the AdPro 360 Champ uh, Challenge Series. Thank you, Challenger Series. <laughs> get my script up here. I had all that time during the yellow flag. There we go. We'll get it is it. the Top Shelf Mobile Detailing 250. Now, Sean, during this break, why don't we take a second to talk about the point system here that's going to these guys get to earn for stages. Yeah. Let's do that because it's it's not obvious and we haven't discussed it, but the race winner will always get 43 points, Soup. And, of course, each position back will decrease by one point. Now, the stage winner gets an additional 10 points, and that decreases by one point back for each position. Of course, only the top 10 get those stage points, okay? So um, you get one point for leading a lap, and you get one point for leading the most laps. Is that correct, Soup, or is that not correct? No points remember. for leading. No, that's on the script. Right. We took that away, but that was our error. Okay. So that's why the overlay just shows race winner and stage winner. Those are the only right. points you're going to get. Right now... The leader of the race is going to be Josh Thompson. I believe he's going to be shown in first position. And sometimes the racing gods are cruel. Look at this. Mark Clewell, who spent the entire first uh, stage on the outside, finds that number 65 once again on the outside. He's got a little help. Curtis Young back behind him. Outside of row two. Adam Eisenhower inside of row two. There's your front four. Everybody should be able to go the distance. The lead cars are on a 10 lap longer stint than the rest of the guys. We think they should be able to get there. Chug a lug, chug a lug makes you want to holler Heidi Ho as they work down into the first corner. Josh Tanner doing a good job, but we know that that 65 is fast on the top side. Is there finally a chance for him to get down low? The 94 of Curtis Young says, Don't leave me hanging. They go two by two down the back stretch. Top, top side is strong here early, Soup. Tim Cox, the winner of stage one, right now relegated to 12th position, but on the inside, he's right behind the number seven of Blake Griffith. They come around now because the yellow flag laps, they don't have to actually have as many green flag racing laps this time around. Mark Clewell gets credit for leading that lap. He comes across eight one thousandths of a second faster than Josh Tanner. When it comes to that final lap, heading towards the Irish checkered flag there, eight one thousandths a second is as good as a mile. Let's see if he can do it again. The 84 of Josh Tanner on the inside. Getting yeah. a little help from Adam Eisenhower. Go ahead, Sean. Yeah, well, I was going to say, those two are kind of working by themselves right now down there because, honestly, Jason Eisenhower has lost it a little bit. He is being followed here by William Hartman, who did get some of that damage repaired on his Camry during the, uh, the uh, caution there suit. This time around, it is Josh Tanner comfortably out in front. Cleewell comes across in third. Honestly, I think Cleewell had an opportunity to duck down to the inside line, but I think he's happy with the way the top side is working right now. Gets a run off of two. Josh Our Tanner. director, Joe, go ahead. I was, hey, Josh Tanner, in his ad Pro 360 Dirty Air Solutions uh, Mustang there, really a good power down on the bottom. Here we go again, coming around. Looks like he's going to get the best of the 65. A phrase I picked up from our director, Joe Peak when he does a fine job of commentating with the best commentator in the race broadcasting. He likes to call it reconnaissance racing, and I kind of get a hunch right now. That's what the 65 is doing up there, seeing where I need to be. How far back can I be to still get across the start-finish line first? The 36 of Jason Eisenhower and the 6 machine of Gerard Campbell are back in the third row. Our stage winner, Jeff Martin, where is he? He's a 12th, but on the high side. Let's look at that 15 car. Can he make the top side work? That's probably the only way to get anywhere. He is one, two, three, four, five, six in line on the top side. We know that car is fast. 
let me correct myself. That's Jeff Martin. He was fast. He led a few laps during the first stage. He was not our stage winner. Tim Cox was our stage winner in the 19 machine. He stuck in 13th position on the inside with nowhere to go. Boy, and the bottom line rules the roost right now, Soup. Again, though, up front, it's really been Josh and uh, Adam Eisenhower. The work they're doing, again, they're not getting a lot of help from Jason Eisenhower back there uh, on that bottom line. You know, you put an ugly girl in a pretty dress and she always looks nice. I think right now that top that top line is an ugly girl, but they got a pretty dress up front. And that is uh, that number 65 car of yeah. Mark Lewell. And Mark, he's making, he's making that top side very nice to be in. Here's why he keeps the car up there, Soup. He knows how to side draft. He's not afraid to stick it down there next to the door. The guy inside of him is steady, holds a good line, not a scary driver to be around. That will serve you well. And uh, here he comes. That 65 looking strong now. Getting a really nice push from Curtis Young. I better update my references in the Me Too era there. So please send your all your emails to Joe Peak, courtesy of GSRC, please. <laughs> Curtis Young in fourth position on the outside, looking for some way to get that going. Curtis in that number 94. You see what it says on the side there, Soup. Go fast, baby. Go fast. If I knew it was that easy, I would have put that on my car a long time ago. <laughs> How about the number six car in the uh, VFW machine there? Gerald Campbell sitting on the top side. Who we know nothing about, Soup. We know nothing about Gerald Campbell, unfortunately. I'm going to assume Gerald, he's a, he's get us some Mark, information. He's a Mark Martin fan, unless I'm going too far back. Oh, I, I think that's a good call. Yeah. The 07 of William Hartman. We haven't talked much about him. He's fourth in line on the inside. All this going on behind the Pied Piper of Josh Tanner. Started on the pole for the second stage, and that's where he stayed. Hugging the left... Hugging that yellow line right there, keeping it to the left of him. He's certainly making the sponsor happy. Ad Pro just slapped all over that car. Well, they're an advertising firm, so I guess <laughs> they know how to do it. Yes, they do. Sometimes more is more. The 65 with a run. Mark Clewell getting a little push now from the 84 of Curtis Young. All right. Now he's out in front. He's a half car length. Oh, the 84 gets really loose, but he gathers it up. Tanner Knight save. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, Adam Eisenhower is maybe pushing a little too long there as they approach the turn. And boy, that was a close one. Oh, boy, that's going to get that spot up. They're going to drop down below. Oh, is, that a lack of, is that a loss of momentum there, you think, from, from Tanner? Oh. That's what happened. Josh and then yeah. Oh, uh, and Gerald Campbell had what looked like uh, a small chance to get down, but he didn't. He might have a window here. Nope. Gone. Well, now he's on the top side, and he doesn't have the... Here we go. Here we go. Curtis sticking it out there, getting back to the top side. Well, let's see how it works up there without Cleadwell out in front. They come across working lap number 30. They'll be lap number 40. They'll be working as they come across the line. Cleewell in first. The man right behind him, Curtis Young, in second. Take a big, big push for Curtis on the straight there. Curtis right up on him here in the turn. Really, really close. These these two are drafting very, very well together, though, Sue. They're just not erratic. You see them just stuck yep. together. Curtis able to get right up under him and give him a nice push here down the back straights. A couple forwards working together there. Your stage one winner is now fifth in line on the inside. And boy, there is a huge gap to the third car in that inside line. There's an opportunity for some guys on the top side to swing down in there and pick up some positions. One of them is the 13 car of Gary Sexton, I think. No, let me apologize. That's not what I'm looking at. Let's go up here to the driver in sixth position, Will Davis. The number 11 car. He 
The 86 Ooh, he ducks down yeah. in. Eisenhower says, no, I don't want to be stuck up top. Tanner decides to go to the top here, Sue. I'm I'm rather surprised he lost the left uh, Cleewell's bumper there. Cleewell coming across. He is the leader. He's going to get credit with this. Young gets credit for second this time around. Yes, sure enough. Josh Tanner trying to make the top side work. He needs a little help. Let me correct myself. That's Curtis Young outside of row two. That is Gerald Campbell on the inside. Man, look at those two just door to door, Campbell. Bump. It's Tanner there. Man. And a bump also from the 94. Careful, guys. Boy, a great bump from Young. That was a little bit late into the corner. Tanner gets a good run. Sean, I hate to jinx them, but how about a tip of the hat to these guys? They're putting on a great show. Yeah, man, I absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. I really like what I'm seeing here up front. Uh, several patient drivers can turn a, a, a great lap and hold a steady line, and that's really what you need here at Daytona is a good steady line man you just you got to be steady if you can't nobody can follow you nobody can draft with you it's and easy I, to talk about it. it's hard to do i gotta be honest i gotta talk about jeff martin in 11th and tim cox in 12th these guys it's got to be frustrating you know they're fast there's just nowhere for them to go and so instead of causing trouble they're back there doing their best to work their way up up in front they begin to do a little bit of weaving Ooh, oh, a big push. Easy, easy. Boy, oh, Curtis Young. Close. Curtis Young almost got Josh Tanner way out of shape there. Curtis backed off just in time to allow, to allow Josh to catch it. Gabriel Wood coming over, sending, complaining about something. Pretty Shad. much the conversation has been pretty, yeah. <laughs> been pretty well behaved. Now they are getting to the point where you can't afford not to be in the position you want to be because if a yellow flag were to come out now, I think the stage would be over. So really, you're racing to hold your spot here. Yeah, Sean, I wish, we, I wish we knew information on the six car, but he's doing a great job back there. And, and you know what? That's Gerald Campbell. So you, you don't... You don't want to sacrifice this entire race for the sake of getting those stage points. Yep. Finishing, I, I'm sorry, the stage points are making finishing just seems to be so much more important in the long game. Well, especially with the field the size it is now, if you're up front, 45 points. Boy, they have some traffic they're yep. going to deal with. Those guys Charles are staying Smith up on the top side. Of the way. Another good job from a driver getting out of the way. That was a Tim Regner. Regner's in the 70 machine, lets him go by. Oof. Look at this up front, man. Tanner. Tanner got the legs right now, but can he hold it? Here comes the 65, Mark Cleewell. Boy, he tried to, I'm talking about Josh Tanner, he tried to pin Cleewell down there, tried to get yeah. as much side draft as he could. Another bump from his buddy in the 94 of Curtis Young. That was a good bump. That's got the 84 out in front, but only for a while. Boy, Mark Cleewell has that car on rails. It's really, he's in great shape. He comes across. Oh, but he may not get credit with leading this lap. Mm. He does not. Josh Tanner. Tanner beat him there. By four one thousandths of a second. Cleewell is not going to like that. This is a strong group right here, Soup. Now the 86 car of Adam Eisenhower starts to pull up. Just on the left quarter panel of Josh Tanner. Tanner's not worried because he's got his buddy Curtis Young back there to give him a bump when he needs it. Probably not right now in the corner, though. Now, Curtis Curtis keeps measuring him up here and, and being very tactical with, with the bump there. 
Oh my goodness, it's going to be a photo finish. This time, it was Mark Lewell by four one thousandths of a second. Lap car down there at the bottom, got to be careful. Oof. He almost got up into the racing line there trying to get through the turn. You know, Sean, being first across the line, very important because if a yellow were to come out on that lap, it would go back to ever who's ever leading the lap. So those right. four one thousandths of a second, very important. If, if ever possible, you want to try to lead the lap. This time, I think Clewell has a great chance of leading as he comes across working lap number 49. Let me correct myself. That was lap number 48. Now they work lap number 49. It is Mark Clewell. Oh boy. Gerald Campbell has been behind Clewell this entire time. Then the 86 car of Adam Eisenhower. That's the low side. But the top side is a going. And they are going fast. There they go. Tanner Young. Oh, oh no. Oh but no. Now, he, now he's going to go to the outside. Careful. The 84 car is stuck. Oh, and there's a lap car up ahead. They managed to slalom through the lap car as well. They were three wide coming up on the lap car. They get it done. White flag. Mark Clewell. Gerald Campbell. Is Campbell going to take a shot? He's going to see what he can do on the top side. He's got a pretty good run. He needs a little help from the 84. Josh Tanner. Tanner gets him a huge bump. <laughs> Not enough for the six to close the door, though. The 86 behind. I'm afraid he gave him that bump too soon. That's Eisenhower down there in the SSS machine, the Sim Speed Shop machine, inside of row two, inside on the inside line, second in line, as they come to the line. It's going to be close. It's going to be Cleewell. Going to give it to Cleewell there. He was there across the line just by a nose soup. Seven one thousandths of a second. Nine championship points go to G Gerald Campbell. Adam Eisenhower picks the base. Josh Tanner, who was on the top side for most of the stage, is going to get sixth. Will Davis, Curtis Young, Tim Cox, remember him from stage one? He's going to get some more points. He comes home in what would be seventh position. Eighth was William Hartman. Ninth, Blake Griffith. And the final championship point goes to Trey Galgan. Okay, we're looking for, I would think, most people to come in and make a pit stop here under yellow, as they cannot go the distance from this far back. There might be a few drivers, like Mark McFadden, Gabriel Wood, who might decide to stay out. They pitted earlier. We'll see how it plays out. Let's go ahead on the Global Sim Racing Channel now as we turn on the music. We're going to take a short break, but we'll be back before we go green.
Listen to the commentator intro back into the race better than he did last time. You're watching the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of the Simulated Stock Car Association Ad Pro 360 Challenge Series. Round one from Daytona. It is the Top Shelf Mobile Detailing 250. All right, Sean, they get bonus points for winning the stage. How does this work? Soup, this is how it works. The playoff field size is 12 drivers. Now, you win a race... You get a driver into the playoffs if he or she is inside the top 30 in regular season points. Now, important there, you've got to be in the top 30 in order to qualify, okay? Now, the rest of the 12-car field is, is filled based on their regular season points. So, I mean, essentially, you, you could have, you know, guys back in 18th, 19th, 25th in points with... You know, stage wins, uh, ah. you get enough of them, then you know what? The, the number of spots available for those 12 really slim down based on the points. So now the regular season champ is awarded 15 playoff points, okay? And those points carry over to the chase, okay? Now, five playoff points, you get those for winning a race, and you get one playoff point for winning a stage. Hence, these stages are important as we get ready to go back to green here, Soup. And with that out of the way, everyone understands what's at stake, including the drivers. If they were watching the broadcast, they got it figured out. Mark McFadden leads. Here how he got there. He did not come in. He's on a five-lap longer stint than everybody else. He made a stop right before the yellow flag flew. He's out in front. Everybody else will have to come in and, well, in theory, McFadden's stop will have to be a little bit longer because he has a little bit less fuel. But nevertheless, I'm sure he's happy to be up there. On the top side, though, it's the 19 car of Tim Cox. He's getting a little help from the 86 of Adam Eisenhower. Stuck on the inside behind McFadden is the 65 of Mark Clewell. Clewell is trying to help the 48 go. McFadden has got to be happy, Sean, with his push partner. Indeed, Soup. I mean, you need a partner around here if you want to go to the front. Oh! Oh, well... Uh, didn't and work out well. Clewell straightens it out. Did we go yellow or is it off the racing line? Ah, they're going to let Clewell still back there spinning. I don't, he's, I'm sorry, not spinning. Now there it's out. Caution. Well, I was just saying how happy McFadden was from his partner, but maybe not. Boy, got to him pretty early in the corner, right, Sean? Yeah, suit. That's kind of the way the cookie crumbles here. Man, that is unfortunate. Well, see, that's my that's my theory about having a guy pushing me that doesn't have any sponsors on his car. He has no <laughs> responsibility to anybody else watching. He's kind of like a he's kind of like Zorro back there. Nobody really knows who he is. He's the masked guy. Riding on board with the masked man right there, Mark Clewell. And what was was a windshield full of a uh, wing now opens up to a nice blue Florida sky. Look at the blimp. <laughs> Look at the flowers. <laughs> That's Soup, it. I know you get that. Come on I, now. <laughs> I, 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 I get into it. <laughs> We already have to apologize for confusing Bobby McFadden or Mc, Mc, McFerrin with Bobby McFarland. So we got that straight. <laughs> Clearly, they are not the same person. Although Clearly. it would be so cool. We're out of yellow flag material now and we just took a break. So this is what you get. Sean and I just kind of <laughs> kind of filling and stuck with the director's commentary in our ear telling us to behave let's go ahead and set the stage for you right now tim cox who was stuck on the high side well he'll get his choice of lanes now at least i believe so he'll probably take the inside line adam eisenhower will get pushed to the top josh tanner he was very fast in sage too made a name for himself he's up there blake griffith haven't heard much from him he sits in fourth in that number seven car the sim speed shop special. Curtis Young is at fifth. One of the series organizers, Gary Sexton, back there in sixth position. Gary, Jeff, still still making a good run out of here, Sue. Jeff Martin, the winner of 
the inaugural race here on GSRC in the Cup Series. Sits back in seventh position. We asked Jeff if he was going to race full time with us. He said uh, no, but here he is now for the second race in a row. Trey Galgan behind him. Will Davis. Yes, it is a different series, but nevertheless, here he is. Again, our director talking to me. William Hartman in 10th position. Soup Kyle Cammer getting a wave around. The 88 going to get back on the lead lap here. He'll be the last car on the lead lap. 21 cars still on the lead lap in this race. We started with 25. If you're a driver watching this race on replay, go ahead and check the GSRC schedule. We'd love to see in some other races that we broadcast. We cover over a dozen different series here on GSRC. I'm sure you can find one that you like. We'd like to see a little cross-pollination. Now, Robert McFarlane is being shown in 24th position. Is that? Yes, that is correct. He's down in 24th. He's a few, well, he's more than a few laps down. He's had extensive repair to that uh, Savage racing machine. That Ford Mustang is, well, it's hurting just a bit, Sue. He's going to come on down pit road, get out of the way here. Let me get rid of him. I apologize. I got him confused with Mark McFadden. All right. So now that puts Tim Cox back up in front. With Adam Eisenhower going to flank him. We are working lap 60. Sean, while it is a, a 50 lap stint as opposed to 25, 25, and 50. In actuality, it's really only 40 laps as we currently work lap number 60. It's a bit of a long uh, caution. You know, Sue, we're kind of getting into a window here with this. Yeah. With this caution flag. If you've come in and filled up, boy, you're going to be really, really close here to the end. These cautions obviously save a lot of fuel. You've got guys out there probably just feathering it around, turning off the ignition, whatever they can. It's going to be awful tough to make it to the end, but who knows? Uh, uh, 30 to 35 was the call, but again, cautions really changed that number quite a bit. Um, ooh, not sure what's going on with the 84. Josh Tanner pulling off back here. Yeah, it might be a little housekeeping by the oh, race okay. towards. That's why yeah. we're so long going on, but this, this changes the strategy. I want to point your attention to car number 04. This is Michael Snow. According to my timing and scoring, he's the guy that, that's farthest up with the least amount of laps out there. He's only got two laps. He's got 41 to go. Can he just tuck in behind somebody and steal one? That's the thing, man. I, you know, it's... We're going to go around again. By the way, Michael Snow's car, Soup, you'll be happy to know, it is Sasquatch rated, sir. That is a Sasquatch rated 4x4 four four machine right there. Well, you know, Sasquatch is up, up north. They... Right there on I... the hood of the car, Soup. You know, I guess with his name as Snow, it, it probably should be the abominable snowman. It should be a Yeti rather than a Sasquatch. <laughs> just, I'm just thinking marketing-wise. Well, Michael Snow from St. Mary's, Georgia. That's the Snow Motorsports Machine Lone Squatch Off-Road Club is that sponsor. Okay, we're going to point out a few more drivers here. 19th position. Is he still on the lead lap? We're looking at... Uh, let's go to Gerald Campbell. Gerald Campbell in 15th spot. He came in and topped off. He's been out there for... One of these laps, he's the leader of all the cars. He has the fewest laps on us. Mark him on your clipboard, boys and girls. Car number six. All right, the lights are out here, Soup, so we are getting ready to go green again. If you just came in and took a stop, I think that might have been a pretty wise thing to do. I'll Maybe. Tell you what. <laughs> 40 Jay. to go. Gerald might be putting himself in a pretty good window here. I don't know. Could need a lot of help, but I like to gamble, don't you, Sue? I'm back in 19th. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, our attention is going to go on the front. Tim Cox 
Ben Strong. On the outside of him, one of the Eisenhower boys. It would be the Adam version. Pace car pulls in. Hey, it's been a long yellow, but we're finally under green. Working lap number 62. Boy, and Tim Cox did not get that car moving too fast there. And boy, Josh Tanner all over the rear bumper there. As they try and get to the turn, Tanner doing everything he can to just stay off of that bumper. Blake Curtis. Griffith is apoplectic in the 7 machine. He's urging Eisenhower to get going. Let's go, Adam, as the 7 and the and the 86 begin to fall back. In fact, now a car has pulled out in front. The 11 car of Will Davis has taken the top side. Yeah, and Jeff Martin had gone up, with, gone up there with him, but Jeff decided to slide back down in line on the bottom. Now Jeff starts to think about sliding back up the track. There he goes. Oh, and he's going to take the 94 with him. Here comes Curtis Young. I think Curtis Young knows the name of Jeff Martin that says, that wouldn't be a guy, a bad guy to have back there pushing. My gosh, look at the 15 of Martin. He's back and forth like a loom. That kind of driving will get you pulled over in my <laughs> neighborhood, and you'll be walking the white line. It Same might, the alphabet in reverse. It might get you wrecked here at Daytona, too. you got to be careful. Boy, now they are bunched up right in the middle of the 15. He has no room ahead of him, no room behind him. That is Jeff Martin. Now they ease out. All this going on behind Tim Cox, who's hugging that yellow line. Curtis Young in the 94, looking for a little help. We saw some help from before. You saw what it got you. And Sean, conspicuous by his absence, is is the driver that was our leader. Remember the 19 car? Is that was the number? No, that's Tim Cox. Who am I thinking about that has disappeared now? If I can find my Jerry, timing and score. Jerry Campbell, the six. No, it's the it's. Uh oh. Ooh. Boy, big the 90, yeah, the big bobble there out of Curtis Young. Yeah, everybody behind him had to check up. It's a scramble back there, Soup. The number 65, the Zorro machine. That's the car I was worried about. I have a hunch Mark Cleewell might have got a penalty for, for turning the car in front of him. Not sure, but he is well back in the back now. We try to monitor race control. That one might have slipped by us. Three cars up in front. Cox, Tanner, and how about this driver, the 49 machine of Trey Galden. In the Lancaster County Career and Technology Center machine. Pretty red and blue car. Will Davis on the top side in the 11 looking for a little help. Boy, and the 62 checks up, and right behind him there, the 07 of William Hartman. Hartman almost turns the uh, 62 of Michael D'Amico around. D'Amico working so hard to get here back to the front. Look at the run on the top side. There goes Will Davis. A little different attitude than we saw early on. A little more aggressive out there. Look at the uh, Davis with a run. He came from about four cars back got that top side working haven't heard much from him all afternoon then all of a sudden he shows up with some help from the 94 of curtis young will davis another one of the ccr drivers out here this evening from augusta georgia there's a tough combo of drivers on the inside though cox and tanner are going to be hard to deal with they come around finish up 66 working 67 Davis was back by 12 of thousandths of a second. He's right there. Sean, I'm not sure if the top line will get you around the car on the inside, but it might get to the finish line before the car on the inside. I, I'm going to say it again. You got to be willing to side draft a little bit. You got to be brave. Get it down there. Try and pick up a little bit of extra speed to start that run off before you get to the turn. Will doesn't do a good job of it right there, and that slows him down just enough. Now he's about to get a little lift, a little push here from the 94. Curtis going to get right up under him. He's going to back off a little oh! bit there. 
Oh boy. <sighs> boy, Davis. I'm solid nervous. Will keep I'm them nervous. Bar going straight. They're making me nervous. <laughs> Remember, children, there's going to be a yellow flag. These guys have to come in. There's not enough fuel for these drivers to get to the end. We think some of the cars in the back, maybe. Somebody like Steve Durham. Currently sits Durham Racing right now. In a, look at this. Look at the 10 car. This is not where I would expect him to be if he's saving fuel. Unless he's really saving fuel. He doesn't even want to race with the crowd. He's just back there going slow. Can he get there without a stop? You got to go fast enough that you don't lose a lap. Yeah, I, boy, you know, I, I've always feared losing too much touch with the uh, the lead group. And I, I'll tell you what, I'm afraid Steve's kind of fallen into that. He doesn't have a lot of help here behind him with Kyle Cameron and Jeff Dotson. Uh, both cars have just a little bit of damage on them. I think it's, uh, well, maybe not Dotson so much as uh, Cam, or I'm sorry, maybe not uh, Cameron. Cameron's got some damage. It's Dotson that doesn't have any on his. But again, it's, it's three cars, Soup. That pack up there is huge. Well, here's his thinking, maybe, as we look at the leaders that come across the line right now. Let's see who leads this time. It's going to be really close. Oh, my gosh, it's the car. It was Curtis Young who's now taken over the lead. Curtis Young on the outside got there first. Yeah, Will we, were, Davis. we were talking about that all behind there, and we missed, what, yep. four lead changes in the process. <laughs> Now look at the nine. Look at the ninety-four making a move on the outside, getting some help from Jeff Martin. Jeff Martin, yeah. we know he's fast. And Jeff took a look to the inside to to maybe make it three wide there for a moment. He said, "Nah, maybe not." Jeff fishing for an opportunity up there. That's that's what that uh, that's what that Chevrolet looks like. It's doing. Will Davis got a great run from the outside. We were talking about we're not sure if the outside line would get you to the front. Well, he proved us wrong. Is Davis now out in front? He gets ahead of Tim Cox. Cox cannot be happy back there. Pinned in the second position. Just to follow up on the driver that's way back there. If a yellow flag were to come out, everybody's going to bunch up. They all come into pit lane about the same time. Those cars in the back are going to save fuel. They're going to take about eight less laps of fuel. Oh, look at the 94. Practicing some rhinoplasty as he chopped the nose <laughs> off of Will Davis. Davis had to go below the double yellow line to keep everybody going straight. Oh, Curtis Young not making any friends in the Davis household. Jeff Martin now, the 15. Once, once uh, that car got out of the way, I'm talking about Curtis Young. That put Martin at the head of the line. The 15 machine. You saw him win last time out. Just a week ago when we covered him in the cup cars. And now he's looking to win this one. Getting a little help from Adam Eisenhower. Blake Griffin in the 7 car on the outside as well. Okay, Sean, here it is. Martin's in front now. Let's see if he weaves back and forth like a jaywalking mailman trying to protect both lines. Right now he's got the inside. Can he afford to come across up on top? No. He's going to deliver the mail on one side of the street. Jeff, part of that Southeast Motorsports team. Got the Sim Speed Shop machine there up top, the 86. Adam Eisenhower. So the guys that were on the top side are now down on the bottom. Guys down on the bottom and now up on the top there, Sue. Both of those cars on the top side, Eisenhower and uh, and the number seven car of Griffith sporting the SSS logo. Of course, that is the Sim Speed Shop logo, one of the sponsors here of this series. If you're watching, your cars are doing really well. Adam Eisenhower out in front now, at least going through two. It's almost like a ballet soup watching these guys get around. 
Yes, well, the drivers will get to come in and change their tutu soon as pit stops will be opening up. <laughs> they can't get here from the end. Come on in and get some new slippers on those cars. I was just thinking that myself. Time for a new set of dancing shoes. Got a couple cars in the back already making their way down. Oh, big trouble for the 07 William Hartman. He got a little contact with Michael Snow right behind him. Oof, Hartman got really squirrely, almost lost the car. That would have taken out the whole back end of this pack. That's the 07 machine, not to be confused with the 7 machine of Great Glyphit that is up front. Look at that pack. There you're looking at Michael Snow. Can find some drivers that haven't got a little love from GSRC going through here. I think we've covered about most of all of these guys. Oh, this is getting really squirrely up front. The sure seven is. just dancing around there. Like, like really, really making it look wild. Well, last time around, he got his uh, sponsor teammate to the cross the finish line first. Eisenhower got credit with leading lap number 76 in that 86 machine. Boy, this field coming up on a lapped car. Tim Ranger's up there in 22nd place all by himself. Soup. He's got Eric Carmen just blaring on the radio on that thing and looking in his <laughs> mirror. He sees this, this pack on its way. But all by myself there. Talk about a car in the box. Let's look at the 11 machine. He just has nowhere to go. This is a. This is the car of Gary Sext. I'm sorry. Let's go to the. Will Davis. There we go. There we go. Going to Will Davis. There. He is just stuck there. No room to the top. No room Careful. to the bottom. The O4 gets into who was that? They were trying to avoid that car, the Rangers car. And it was. Was it Cleewell? It was Cleewell. It got bumped to the inside there. Soup. Cleewell dropping back close to losing this draft. Cleewell, remember, was running up front. We are just assuming that some type of penalty got him pushed to the back. Again, that's just an assumption on our part. If we're wrong about that, we apologize to the driver and his fan club as well. Mark Cleewell currently in mm. 17th. He's losing it. He's losing the draft. That is a shame. That car can run up there. Sean, these drivers are now on 25 laps. Granted, not all of them were under green. Can you pit, Sean, from the from the second line? Is is that possible, or do you need to do you need to get down? <laughs> well, you gotta I find mean, a way. You gotta find a way to get to pit lane and. You don't want to go through somebody to get there, I so you're gonna have to make. You're gonna to have to either get down to that bottom line, or you're gonna to have to let up and let everybody go by and come all the way from the top to the bottom once they've cleared you. So, it's uh, it's tricky, man. Oh, soup! Almost got twenty to go. I have uh, Can I? When we get there? Well, no, because there's a okay. you can't you can't boogie us until the yellow flag because there's a pit stop between here and there. I don't want to be boogieing and then have the yellow flag come out. All right, Sean. Sean's trying to tell us. We, they'll. I will. Shawnee, you just be patient. I'll find you oh. a spot. Okay. I okay. Promise. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> like Christmas with the kid. Just, All right. Just excited to be back on uh, I... some NASCAR type cars, man. <laughs> they are working lap number 80 they are lurking lap number 27 on this fuel run I start to worry if I'm a car like the 86 out there on the top side burning more fuel I hope I don't have to be the first car to pit How about the 15 of Jeff Martin? We watched him be really strong last round. Here he is again, up in front when it counts. And I've gone the whole event without calling him Mark. 
<laughs> Tip of the hat to these drivers, Sean. Yeah, we've had one yellow, but by gosh, this is some great racing. Man, they have been awful good here at Daytona. I, I don't want to stress that too much. We still have 19 laps to go, but right. still, they have been uh, just short of magnificent here tonight at Daytona International Speedway. It's been a lot of fun to watch. And if we get one, it really would not be that unheard of right now. Now look at this Eisenhower with a nice lead up front. Cannot make it stick. Jeff Martin gets it back. They come out of four. Let's stay on this. Let's see what kind of drive they get to the finish line here. This could be what the finish looks like. And right now it belongs to the inside line. Martin comes home ahead 17 one thousandths of a second ahead of Adam Eisenhower. Now, Soup, the top ten are all on the same fuel. Yes, Every they are. One. Every one of them. But, they all come together and they try and break this thing up. But some of them have been behind the entire time. Some of these guys have been pushing. Look at this. Eisenhower again with a great run. There's an opening if he wants it. He does not want to leave his teammate behind. Careful, boys. Out of four. This time, let's see who leads them across the line. Is it going to finish up lap number 82? Oh, the inside car had the drive again. Mark Martin. Well, they don't do it much closer to this on our timing and scoring. One one thousandth of a second. How fast is that, Sean? Pretty fast. Fast. Pretty fast. <laughs> and with that said, the 86 machine starts to fall back now on the top side. Fear not, soup, he says. I can get us there. Oh, wait a minute. Things have shaken up a little bit. He's lost his dancing partner. The seven car of Blake of Blake Griffin goes to the inside line. Look at that. Boy. Yeah, it's soup. And, and you know what? Uh, it, it's time. It's time to start finding your way down to the bottom. We see a couple of guys starting to move their way down there. It's really slowed down this top line here. Guys I'm setting back, up yep. for this pit stop here. Yeah, the 86 machine. I think he's trying to find his way down to that bottom line. He gets a little bit of a run. Got a little help from the 04. Getting a lot of help right now. That car that's, is moving. That's the Sasquatch machine. Yes. That's Michael Snow. The snowman. The snowman. He's bounded down. Loaded up in. All right. Hang on. Hang on. I got to get by the car. Oh, oh. 70 of Tim Rangers again. They got more. They've got another pack right in front of them here. It doesn't look like these drivers know what they want to do. But Kyle Cameron, watch out. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. Toothpaste oh. through the tube. There they go. Did you Eisenhower see that? up in front, snow behind him. Woo. The 94 was not clear when he came back up on the inside of Blake Griffin there. Oof. Wow. What is going on? Is the window going to open? No, my gosh. Sean, I wonder if these guys out front have too big of a lead. Are they going to get gobbled up? There is a lot going on right now. <laughs> Here comes the horde. If I were them, I think about going too wide, slowing these guys down. Now, one of those drivers, the 88, that is Kyle Kammer. He's one lap down. He's in the lucky dog position. Kyle or Gabriel Wood says it's time for him to come in. Wood well back. Any other takers this time by our leaders? They kind of split. Locking them up. Eisenhower gets down, as does Jeff Martin, as does Gabriel Wood. Also joining the party, Josh Tanner and Mark McFadden. Five cars in. Man, this lead pack got to be very, very careful here. 
It's Martin. Eisenhower to the front. Martin slides it in perfectly. I'm looking to see if the car goes up. It does not. In and out. It's a splash and go. Tires don't matter here at Daytona. Martin is out first by quite a distance. No. Eisenhower out in front. Yeah, and that's Steve Duran right behind him, helping him out. There's Durham at the back of the field. A lap down right now, Sue. So now our leader, Jason Eisenhower. He's got time to play with here, Sue Peace. This will be 29 laps yeah. when you come around. Eisenhower and Snow in the 04 car. We documented it before they went green. They're on that later pit strategy. Now the car in between them, well no, that's correct. The, that's the 10 car of Steve Durham. He right. is a lap down. He does not belong. Well, he belongs, but we all know what I mean. Those guys all come around again. So who is the leader of all the cars that came in that time? Let's go to Adam Eisenhower in the 86 machine, currently in 13th position. He's out with Gabriel Wood. According to my timing and scoring, these guys have six seconds on Jeff Martin, who's all by himself in 15th. Eisenhower pit stop under seven seconds. Martin's pit stop, 8.7. Leaders starting to approach some more lap traffic here in Mark McFadden. Josh Tanner up there on the high side. Now don't get confused. There are two oh, Eisenhowers here. Got a couple more peeling off here, Sue. Will Davis, nope, he missed it. Way too hot there for Will Davis. You've got the Blake Griffith in there. The 94's in. Curtis Young. Gary Sexton as well. Tim Cox. Looks like five of the front runners coming in. Right on board with Will Davis. While this is going on, you see him making it, lighting it up. Here comes Eisenhower. Now this is Adam Eisenhower and Gabriel Wood. I believe they are still going to be the leaders of all the cars who have pitted. Let's see. Nope, Tim Cox is out ahead of him. Tim Cox, Gary Sexton, Curtis Young, Blake Griffith. Well, They've made their stops. They're in and out. They are the leaders of all the cars that can go the distance from yeah. here. They're just flying oh. on by. What is up with Griffith here? I'm going to make sure that he actually made a stop. Yeah, he was just slow for whatever reason. I guess that was his momentum. So, yes, as I reported, they were out first. Adam Eisenhower and Gabriel Wood, they had the momentum. They passed them. About to catch this next group here, too. They're dropping, dropping more of them as they go by here. That's Galgan. He's made his stop. He gets passed. Okay. So they've completed that soup. Now they've got themselves up That's to fourth it. and fifth there. The three cars in front of them still all need to come in. Jason Eisenhower, Michael Snow, and Gerald Campbell. We got to give these Eisenhower boys some nickname. We have two groups of cars. Jason Eisenhower is leading the pack that are on the alternate pit strategy. He's ahead of Snow and Campbell. Man. Then it is his brother not coincidentally, also named Eisenhower in fourth position, leading Gabriel Wood, Blake Griffith, and Curtis Young. Boy, and I'll tell you what, Adam and Gabriel about to be gobbled up here. Here comes Blake, Curtis Young, Gary Sexton, Tim Cox, all up on the outside. They've got the momentum. They've got the line. Yeah. This very much, as we're looking at this, very much could be ah, a ah. pass for the lead. Here comes Tim to even things up. Oh, I thought he was going to stay down at the bottom with him. He decides to go to the top. Yeah. 
So there are seven laps of racing to go. Uh, eight, I guess, if you want to be official about it. Eight laps to go. Eisenhower, Snow, and Campbell been out there for 34 laps. A yellow flag would could mean the difference here, Sean. Mark Cleewell, what could have been for him getting past? We're going to focus on this battle for third because the guys up front, we're not sure if that's a real battle. We don't think they can get there. What is important is who's leading between Jason Eisenhower, Michael Snow, and Gerald Campbell if a yellow comes out here in the next lap or two because we won't go back green, and that may be enough yellow flag laps for them to get to the end. Let's go to the leader real quick. Look, look at Eisenhower. He's tucked him. No, he's coming in. Here they Here come. Here they go. Here they go. Eisenhower, Snow, and Campbell. They needed that yellow. It did not come. I think they are going to get gobbled up. We'll watch them. That puts our attention now back to Adam Eisenhower. He's on the inside line ahead of Gabriel Wood in the double zero. Ooh. They work around the slower car. Josh Tanner, man, they almost made contact with him coming by. Here they come. Campbell, Eisenhower, Snow still in the pit. Yeah, they're going to get by him easy speezy. So off the lane, but as you see, they're going to run right by Michael Snow. Sean, with five laps to go, six laps to go. What time is it, baby? Baby, let's drop that disco ball down. It's time to boogie. Let's do this, man. Out in front, it is Adam Eisenhower in the 86. I'm going to tell you the inside line. That's Gabriel Wood right behind him on the inside, and then the 19 of Tim Cox. Let's go to the top side. The seven car is Blake Griffith. Behind him, Curtis Young and Gary Sexton. Two more countries coming to the UN William Hartman and Tony Gal uh, Trey Galgan. They'll get there. You know, William Hartman back there in the 07 has been up and down this field tonight like a yo-yo soup. He still finds himself here in the top 10. It's going to need a little help, though, from uh, Trey Galgan to get this thing going and get up here to this pack. Well, if they race too wide up in front, we'll see if Hartman can get there. That gap from 6th to 7th, 3 tenths of a second. Hartman needs Galgan to be a little bit better of a drafting partner right here. This Gotta is really important. This is really important now as they come out of four. This is really the point of no return. First to the line. It is Adam Eisenhower. If a caution were to come out now, we think he would be the winner. Can or those guys catch up? Here they come, Sean. Hartman and Galgan are coming, although I don't know where they're going to go once they get there. <laughs> With apologies to the rest of the field, we're going to focus our attention here for these final four laps on the front eight cars. The inside line, Alex Eisenhower, Gabriel Wood, and Tim Cox. Blake Griffith on the top side, looking for a little help. Curtis Young behind him. Gary Sexton, third in line. They come across one more time, Adam Eisenhower. With Gabriel Wood right there on a bad spot of the bumper. He backs off just in time before they get to the turn. They got a lapped car of Will Davis, the 11. He'll be able to get out of the way, currently in 20th. Look at the run now from the 7 car. Griffith with a great run and another bump from the 94 of Young. It's time to go. Don't bump him here. Curtis right on his bumper. They have room. Davis stays up and out of the way. Who's going to lead this time across? One more time. It's the inside line again of Adam Eisenhower. Well, we don't want that green right checker tonight. Go, 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 go. Let's go, boys. They continue to race. You guys in the back that are battling for 13th, we love you, but it really doesn't matter. Keep the car straight. Let's see if we can finish this under green. Look at the push now that Griffith is getting. 
He's got a nose out in front of Eisenhower. The 94, Curtis Young trying to help. He gives him a bump in a very mm. scary place. They come across. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Watch out. And I believe they're going to be. Is this the white flag lap? It is. We're going to finish this under green no matter what happens now. A big run from Brake Cliffin. That's the best run he's had. He's a half car in the head working out of two. It's all your suit. The 94 of young, of young trying to help him. If he can get there, Young with another bump. That's one bump. That was a big one. Griffith now with a half car length lead. He's going to need another push. And he gets it. And one more. Losing momentum. They touch. They bang doors. That is Wood trying in the double zero. Trying to find a way around. There's nowhere to go. Coming down to the line. It's Eisenhower. It's Griffith. It's Eisenhower. It's Griffith. Adam Eisenhower gets the win. Oh. Man, Frank what a Griffith, scramble. Gabriel Wood. I got call it a horse race. The jockeys are tall in the saddle. Fourth position to Curtis Boy. Young. Tim Cock gets fifth. What a great battle back there between Jeff Martin and Gerald Campbell across the line. Campbell just edges him out by a nose to take ninth. <laughs> you can't have better racing than that. Adam Eisenhower gets the win. The racing is over here at Daytona, but our broadcast is far from done. What we're going to do right now on the Global Sim Racing Channel, take a short break, but then we'll come back to run down the entire finishing order, talk to some of the drivers. We put, we put a lock on the gate here at Daytona. Back in a few.
welcome back to the Simulation Stock Car Association Ad Pro 360, the Challenge Series, round number one from Daytona. Woohoo! It was the top shelf mobile detailing, and I'm telling you, these guys put on a top shelf performance. Let's run down the finishing order as we finish under green. Adam Eisenhower comes home ahead five one hundredths of a second ahead of Blake Griffith. Gabriel Wood in the double zero comes home in third. Curtis Young and Tim Cox round out the top five. Gary Sexton, Trey Galgan, William Hartman, Gerard Campbell, and Jeff Martin finish up your top ten. Crackers? All right, man. It's Mark McFadden finishing 11th tonight. Michael Snow with a good run up nine spots to finish 12th. Michael D'Amico hangs in there, finishes 13th, 14th. Going to go to Jason Eisenhower. 15th, Steve Durham, Josh Tanner in 16th, 17th, going to go Mark Clewell, Kyle Kammer in 18th, 19th, going to go to Will Davis, and 20th, going to go to Jeff Dotson, the last car on the lead lap, Charles Smith, Tim Rangers, Robert McFarlane, Steve Seegers, and Donald Stewart round out the 25, Soup. How about 25 cars, 21 still running at the end? of a 250 mile oval race at Daytona without fast repairs. That is some seriously good driving and we appreciate that here at GSRC and for our fans as well. Man, they put on a great show. We're gonna see if we can talk to our race winner if he's come in here. If we he doesn't, him. I'm we gonna talk him. to, oh, you got him. Got Adam him. Eisenhower, congratulations on the win. Thank you, got a copy? We do. Hard fought holding that inside line. You weren't going to let that yellow line get away from you. No, no, I wasn't. Uh, I owe a lot of that to, uh, well, to my crew, the Sim Speed Shop crew, um, put together a great car. But uh, the double zero, we pitted together and uh, came out, and it just made sense to stay down there. I prefer the, I prefer the top line. Many cases uh, before our pit stops, I, I stayed up there because uh, I had reason, uh, reasonable success up there. But uh, when it came down to it, it just made sense to stay down. And, boy, um, double zero pushed me to the win. All right. Now, this that was important. We appreciate that. But this really is the more important question. What relationship, if is any, is the other Eisenhower in the race? <laughs> That's my big brother. Big brother. Okay. So you All right. We settled that brother. soup. And he is, a, he is associated with the uh, – the Sim, what is your sponsor again? I have that in front of me. Sim Sports Shop? Close, close. Simspeedshop.com. Sim Speed Shop. Yep, ab absolutely. Uh, button boxes, custom button boxes. And you can buy and sell equipment there as well. Used equipment. Yes, absolutely. Uh, starting up a forum uh, to do that. Uh, that's, you know, taking a back seat a little bit at this point to uh, – getting the boxes designed, um, getting them manufactured. And, uh, well, Jason does all the all the design and manufacture, and then you can custom design them as well. So, uh, but Jason handles all of that stuff. Uh, he's doing a great job. Very proud of him for this. All right. Now, here, you got to lie to this question, no matter how you answer it here. It's got to be a lie. Were you using one today? <laughs> yeah, I'm using one today. Absolutely. Hey, last one. Uh, Adam, and, uh, who, uh, Adam, between you and Jason, who kept Anita room? <laughs> Uh, I'm uh, probably going to say I, uh, you know what? No, it's probably a tie, <laughs> a tie. And yeah, and both both not on the uh, desirable looking side of things. But uh, things have changed a little bit. We're a lot more neat now. But but as kids, we were six years apart. Um, so he was a big brother and uh, picked on me a little bit when we were young. But we got along great right now. Well, you guys were both leading there for a while. And he was on that different strategy. He came back a little farther, but he got a lot of screen time. Congratulations. We look forward to seeing you down the road. Awesome guys, thanks. Uh, thanks for putting on a great. Uh, thanks for putting a great uh, broadcast on. We appreciate it. Good. We try our best. Adam Eisenhower, your winner today. Sean, who you got? I've got our runner-up sitting here on the podium, Blake Griffin. Blake, uh, the Brunsville, North Carolina native, CCR racing, cross continent racing. Blake, congratulations, buddy. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Um... It was a fun race, a, a really fun race. I'm glad to have finished this one. I've, I ran the truck race and the cup race and uh, didn't finish either of them. I got wrecked out of them. So uh, it's awesome to put uh, Sim Speed Shop up front, one and two. Yeah, it really is. That's a that's a great uh, a great evening for uh, 
for Sim Speed Shop, and uh, a great evening for you, man. That was uh, those closing laps. That was tense, man. Walk us through just like the last two laps and what that felt like uh, in the seat for you. Man, it was crazy. Uh, my teammate uh, from CCR Cross Country Racing, uh, Curtis, was behind me, and I think Gary was behind him. Um, man, Curtis was pushing me hard, and he was overheating. His temps were sky high. So he was having to stay back a little bit in the, in the closing laps to try not to blow up. Well, then the, the last lap, I was like, um, man, stay on me. Push hard, push hard, push hard. And uh, he did. Well, listen, I uh, my first race to get the call with you guys, I was really impressed with uh, how well most of you held the line tonight and we're able to side draft uh not an easy thing to do on these super speedways you've really got to uh, trust uh, have a little bit of trust between you and the guy next to you and uh you guys are making it work and that's really where the speed happens on these uh super speedways oh for sure you gotta have a good team and i've got the best team out there cross continent racing uh we got some great guys all right i'm gonna let you go with one final question soup you taking notes on this one i am Okay, because we're getting to know the guys here. It's new. Absolutely. We're all new, right? I am. Yes. Who's your favorite Disney princess? Well, that's a good one. My favorite Disney princess. Well, seeing as how my niece likes um, Frozen, I, I don't know if one of those are princesses or not. Yep. But well, we'll, we'll give you and Elsa. Yeah, El Elsa and Anna. We'll Elsa. give we'll give you Elsa on that one. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna go with that just because my niece loves those those two and the right. Snowman. So yeah, we'll go with that. Never a wrong answer there. And uh, Blake, we enjoy uh, watching you and we're looking forward to uh, talking to you again soon. I appreciate it, guys. Everybody go and get a box, simspeedshop.com. All right. And uh, a man intent with sponsor placement there, Soup. We got to love that. That's how it is. If you're a race yes. driver, whether in the real world or in sim racing, you got to plug the sponsor. Hey, we get an opportunity to top with the driver who finished third. You know, one of the things that we get to do when we broadcast a race is not just show you how they finished. Sometimes there are turning points. We covered one of them earlier, and I'm talking about Gabriel Wood. Early on, when the big one hit, Gabriel, you had a uh, Days of Thunder moment there with a, with a smoke in front of you. You had to weave your way through all of that. Yeah, that was the plan all night, by the way, Soup. Get ready for another sponsor plug. Uh, we, you know, that was the plan all night, you know, just to ride in the back. I knew how this thing was going to develop. I, I've had multiple races with the B car. I knew guys were going to try and push, and it was not a pushing in the corner rule, per se. So I knew guys were going to be doing it. So I, I waited till the final you know, stage to start racing. But yeah, that big one happened in front of me. Guys were, uh, guys were splitting everywhere, and you know, some uh, guys rolling back down the racetrack. Yeah. For a second there, I thought I wasn't going to make it through. Well, we saw that. Are you going to now, uh, the SSCA, they cover... Uh, there's three different series. There, there's two that we cover here in GSRC and then a truck series that we don't. How many are you racing in? Uh, I'm going to run as many as I can in Cup, and then I'm going for the championship here in the uh, the Challenger Series. You feel better in, in the B car than you do in the in the big car? Oh, by far. Why? Yes, it's just the way the cars are where their dynamics, they're, they're you know, the <laughs> it's kind of a, excuse me, still recovering from the cold from last week. So, you know, at least I stay consistent here in GSRC. Yeah. Um, we, uh, you know, it's a lot more blocky. It's kind of a midway between the truck and the, uh, right. the cup car. It's built like a brick. <laughs> it's in, uh, it's got a lot of downforce, you know, compared to the cup car, it's a lot more shaped like a bullet and you have to drive it a lot more, you know, a lot finer. You know, here in the B car, I think I, I've got a really good chance, you know, just to throw the car in. That's how I like driving them. And the way the setup is at uh, Atlanta, you know, you kind of got to drive it a lot more fine. So that it's a little bit of a struggle for me. But I, I think I've, I'll have a really good shot this year at a championship. Okay, we'll get you out of here on this one. Pay the bills. All right. Well, yeah, we did pick up a sponsor after last week in Daytona, but it's only for two races. So there's still time to hop on board with Gabe Wood. He'll sponsor your company. He'll try your product. Uh, T and J uh, house repair specialist. They hopped on board uh, after uh, the Daytona Cup race last week. Uh, they're based out of Kingsland, Georgia. Uh, you can call either Tom or uh, it starts with a J, but I just, just got to <laughs> learn that for next week. But you know, you can call either one. Jerry, the <laughs> not say Jerry. Let's say Tom Jerry. And Jerry. Tom and Jerry. Okay. <laughs> 
What's the number? The the phone number, you can call either one of them. It's 912-322-7341 or 912-227-0399 at TNJ House Repair Specialist. We try to save you money, not take it. There you go. You did good. Congratulations on the win and getting the plug in, man. Yep. I, sure, I sure hope you got those phone numbers right or some poor old lady in South Dakota is going to be getting a lot of phone calls. <laughs> Soup. We've got one last person to talk to. I, I really wanted to talk to Michael Snow and just talk to him a little bit about this race because we saw him up and down through the field. He still picks up a positive nine positions to finish 12th. Uh, Michael, congr- is it Mike or Michael? Which which do you prefer, buddy? Michael, please. All right, Michael. Listen, that was a, that was a hard-fought race out there tonight. Talk to us a little bit about your experience coming up and down through the field tonight. Well, I can say that there's a lot of pucker moments. Um, I just, you know, you got to feel the car out. And about 30 30 laps to go, I I figured it's time to go. And and so I started pushing, pushing, trying to make the outside line work. I thought that's where my car really liked to be. That's where I thought these cars really liked to be. It took a lot of people to make it roll, but it, it just, that's where they like to roll. You know, and well, listen. Uh, you and did, oh, I'm sorry, we lost we got, you there for once a second. I got to the. the I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We're, we're having okay. We were having a little bit of trouble with your mic there, Mike. Uh, uh, Michael, sorry about that. Can you hear me now? I think we lost them. That, that's too bad. We'll come back. It's going to be a long season. Plenty yeah. of time to talk to uh, Michael Wood. But for a little, we had Wood, and now he's gone. All right. Let's go ahead. And I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and close this up as I try to find the ending of my script. Let's go. And now we got people to thank. And I have to throw that here because this is a new series. So there's lots of people that I'm unfamiliar with. How about we start with everybody at AdPro360. They're an advertising agency specializing in digital and social media marketing. For more information, go to adproresults.com. All one word. I'll say it again. Adproresults.com. Top Shelf Mobile Detailing there in Raleigh, North Carolina. Most experienced auto detailing company for over 35 years. Top Shelf Mobile Detailing has been making rides look new again. Call Robert at 919-883-7497. To everybody at the Simulation Stock Car Association for organizing the AdPro 360 Cup Series and for contracting with GSRC to broadcast. On screen now are just some of the companies and equipment and software that made this broadcast possible. How about that iconic original music that lets your ears alert your eyes you're watching TSRC. Production comes courtesy of Eric Eklund and Casey Lalonde. See the screen for how we contact each of them. Soup, the SSCA returns tomorrow night for the Ad Pro 360 Cup Series. Round two there. And then again, a week later, uh, we, we'll be back here March 8th, round two of the Challenger Series. Both races coming to you from Atlanta Motor Speedway. GSRC will be there to bring you all the action. We hope you join us. Sliding across your screen now are uh, some upcoming broadcasts. So check those out. Mark them down on your calendar if you'd like more information about GSRC, including a complete list of future broadcasts. You can find it all at globalsimracingchannel.com. That's where all the magic happens. We're also on Twitter at GSR Channel. And on Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, if you just type all that in together. And folks, you're watching YouTube right now. There's a subscribe button there. What should they do? Hit it. Subscribe button? Is that what they do? Click on the subscribe button, please. Click on that button. Okay, I'm going to do I don't think I've done that yet. And I've been here a lot, so I'm going to do that. Finally, on behalf of the man whose voice you just heard, Sean Ambrose, our director, Joe Peak, and our camera artist, Dougie Beard, I'd like to thank all of you for watching. With that said, we hope you enjoyed the broadcast. We're off to have fun storming the castle. So until next time... Race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.